Hey everybody, welcome back to this episode of Think Business Live. I'm excited to talk with Pageant Atterbury, who's the CEO, president, and founder of PBA Royal Performing Arts and Training School and New Beginnings Child Care and Academy. Uh, and I just recently found out she used to go to my dad for a dentist, which is great. So, <laughs> small world. Pageant, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with you. Um, You've got a really interesting business. You are um, an entrepreneur. You've had your business for six plus years. Um, tell us a little. Tell us a little bit about your about your business. You know, I'll tell everyone in, in quick summary. You know, if they were to go to LinkedIn and about you, it says collaborating journalism, politics, law, and the knowledge of history into a career in which all my facets may be used. So I loved that. So d dive in and talk about. Um, typically we're diving into stuff, but I think your background is really interesting as far as starting a business at a young age and, and just kind of jumping in. I love that you read my LinkedIn intro. Yeah. yeah. That just touches on my educational background and me just wanting to collaborate all of these different accomplishments into one yeah. path. But in regards to the businesses themselves, the daycares were actually started in 97 by yeah. my parents. And, uh, and I, I think we just, I don't know if you and I side checked about this, but they, they, they pretty much transitioned out a little bit. So they're, they're putting me in. My mom is still hands-on with everything. And um, we're opening up more schools and things. But PBA Royal in itself is something that I started back in 2008. And it just kind of parlayed into what we have today. Yeah. But talk about that when you started it back. You started in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when I say 2008, it seems uh, like a, not too long ago. But 12 years ago, you weren't even 20 yet starting a business. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that um, I think is interesting is right now, kids who are graduating college today, it's like a different world than they thought it was going to be six months ago. And right. so, you know, what are some of the things you did, you know, at that age to start a business? Well, a, the thing with me, it was a little different because my parents had been in business. So they were able to walk me through the paperwork and what was mandatory, that sort of thing, and what caused to make. But they didn't baby me with it. They didn't yeah. say, oh, pageant, let me just go and get this license for you. They were like, no, this is like what you have to do, and you, and you do it yourself. So, yeah, I bumped my head a lot. Um, some money was wasted. Yeah, I think in every business, right? I mean, it's the learning curve. Yeah. yeah. And I told a friend of mine yesterday because he's hesitant on this business venture he's really passionate about. And I said, you, for the past five years, have been playing double dutch with life. Yeah. You know, with double dutch, you're like, when do I get in? When do I get in? And it's like, you have to just, just jump in. And if that rope smacks you in the face, <laughs> right. that's okay. Uh, we've all been there. But as far yeah. as the how... I think a lot of a lot of times people are hesitant and they're scared. A lot of people they don't they're afraid to struggle. And I was never afraid to struggle. It was like, what do I have to do to get from point A to Z? And if it's gonna hurt through B through Y, then I'm up for that challenge. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you set a plan? I think today planning is more important than ever. And I think sometimes you can plan three years out you know, maybe five years out, but you got to reverse engineer it to the kind of the day, the month, the week, the quarter, you know, so, so, and, 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 li and what I tell clients as I'm working with them is you got to have like a, you have to have a living business plan because yeah. what B looks like tomorrow, you could wake up and it could be completely different. So how do you stay nimble? How do you do that and stay nimble and grow at this, and grow and keep on going? Oh, I make a list every single day. I wake yeah. up. What and I put little check boxes. Yeah. What do I have to do every day? And if it's not on my calendar, I just I, I won't do it. And I think a lot of that is just organization because the thing is, and you and I'm sure you've heard this before because you're the business guru, right? Uh, people will come to you with these ideas that they want to expand on, and then they say, "Oh, I really want to do this, but I like this and I like that," and it's like, <laughs> right? Let's do one thing at a time. And really, that's the secret. I know we get excited about other things that come into our minds and hearts, but you can't put all, I mean, you're only one person. Right. 
But on that piece, I think what you're saying is 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 so simple, it's complicated. And what and what I mean by that is it's um um is 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 distractions can really take you off your game. And and sometimes they're so um they're so subtle mm -hmm. that um uh they're so subtle that it, you don't even really realize they're um they're happening. And yeah. so you know, how do you how do you get rid of um how do you, how do you get rid of distractions and really focus? I think it's just conversation um, and communication and those around you who want to talk to you and have this close relationship with you, them understanding that this, I need this moment and this yeah. thing right here, <laughs> Yeah. put this down. <laughs> uh, don't, I mean, I'll flip them, both my phones, I'll flip them over just to get some work done. But I know a lot of times family and like my ex-husband and our son, it's like, I really need you to not talk to me right now. Like in the most, you know, soft, most soft way. You yeah. Know, but yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and so when, when you're kind of, so tell us about PBA, tell us about PBA. So you have all these fundamental things that you're doing. You're starting off with your parents, um, the growth of PBA 2008, take us kind of through the, the growth of that. Oh, wow. So initially, I started PBA Royal as a beauty pageant system. Yeah. Uh, I grew up as a pageant kid. I, I was the only girl for a long time with, of nine, with nine brothers. So that was my path that the parents kind of created for me. And I just kind of walked into it. Uh, really, I just wanted to play sports. <laughs> so this is, we grew up as a sports family. We had trophies all over the house. Like, that was us. So... I started as a beauty pageant system and I would travel through the state of Michigan hosting these pageants. Yeah. With clue on, like, I just kind of figured it out along the way, just mocking other pageant systems. Yeah. And then, um, I, you know, I got back, I got into school, just kind of stepped away for a little bit, came back, and I was renting space in Southfield at a rec center. So I'm just going to teach pageant girls how to win and teach models how to walk. And that the clientele wasn't um, it wasn't growing the way I expected or you know we all expect major growth right. right business and my parents had this building in Detroit and they hadn't it had just been sitting there and I, I asked them if I could have it and turn it into this space and they were like you know whatever we don't care just you know don't burn it up uh, and I I went in and I, at the time I had left my job. Because I was in it, I had just finished school and um, I was, you know, ending certain relationships. I had a newborn and I was like, all right, I, I started using unemployment checks to fund the building that I have today to build the space out. And because it, it used to be a restaurant, an ice cream shop. So I went in, I sold everything, hired contractors and that's the facility that we have today as headquarters. Now we have six locations. So it just, yeah. So how do you do it? I think that, I think your story, especially right now um, with, I think we're going to start seeing more entrepreneurs in the world uh, because of post COVID, uh, because of all the layoffs they've seen, because, you know, people are going to want to just start their own business. I've talked to a couple of people who, while they were home said, you know what, <clears throat> I'm really enjoying my time. Uh, at home with my family and my kids, and yeah. left and started their own business. And so, talk talk a little bit more about some of those, you know, those uh, those kind of those day to day, you know, hits you get, like you were saying earlier, you know, and and how you just keep on going. And because I think you're talking about being organized and having a plan, mm -hmm. and that's so important because a lot of times when you get knocked down and just, you know, for all of us. You gotta, you gotta have to continue to be resilient. So how, mm -hmm. how do you do that over the, you know, for the first couple of years? You, you might hear this a lot from people who immigrate to the United States and their story, and I actually did a paper on this for class. Their story is they come to America because in their country, they don't have government assistance. Like we have, you know, if we fall and bump our head, we call the government and they send us a check or, right. A, a cart with for money for for food or something, right? But what I realized is that when they come here, it's like they 
they can't fail or they're going back to poverty in their home country. And they don't want to go back because a lot of times there's war, just these major issues. They they come here for, you know, for safety and just for a new life. And I kind of just fell into that mindset like, well, here I am. You know, you finish school and you the world is open to you and you have all these expectations. And then the world is like, well, <laughs> you have a degree, but you got student loans and we're going to pay you nine dollars an hour oh we expect you to buy a house and a car and have a family and it's like and you know we're not going to give you health insurance so it's like i don't how do you function off of that yeah well what i did was i was like okay i can't fall into this this loophole that basically has been systematically created i feel uh and only some of us loop out of it into uh, a more like successful realm, I guess I could say. Yeah. And I said, well, the best thing to do is just create your own world. And I tell people that create what you want to be and who you want to be. And you have to be a creator, even when it comes to social media, because people now make money off social media. Right. Because people are like, how, how do you, how do you? And I'm like, you have to paint your picture on social media. Because if you paint it a certain way, people will believe the painting and then they'll buy into it. Yeah, well, that's great. I, I love the way that you put that about being a creator and creating your own world. Because, um, so what are your thoughts on manifesting? You know, once you write things down, you have a plan, you're following it. How do you then? How do you then manifest? How do you manifest? Oh, you just have to believe it. I manifest all the time because I'll write it down and like I'll stick it up somewhere, and I'm like, this is going to happen. Yeah. And then I, I follow the steps to, because I don't, I don't know if you're religious or a person of faith, but you know, faith without works is dead. Yeah. You could have all the faith in the world in this one thing, but if you're not doing the works or the steps to get there, it just, I mean, it just, unless you're a magician, it's, it's not going to happen. So um, positioning yeah. yourself and being prepared. And I think preparation, a yeah. lot of my opportunities or just moments of like, you know, take advantage of this came from preparation because not only was I able to get in the door, I was able to stay in the room because of what I had to do. Yeah. You know, I, I love what you just talked about. I find that in coaching too. So if you go to the bottom of my website, I have a big paragraph that basically says, you know, I can, I know I can help you, but yeah. if, but if you're not willing to do the work, if you're not willing times a hundred, that yeah, can't help you. So sometimes, you know, people expect kind of the magic bullet from a coach or whomever, mm -hmm. right? But if they're not willing to have the discipline, consistently do the small things every day to better themselves, you know, if I wanted more than somebody, the client, or you know, if you wanted more than the person who's in front of you, yeah, then that's just is a bad recipe. Energetically, energetically, it just doesn't yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. And I'm a big believer too, that if you keep it in your brain, we have 80,000 thoughts a day. So if we, and, and and 80 plus percent of them repeat themselves and most are negative. So if we keep it in our head and we don't put it on paper, and we don't mm -hmm. talk about it with someone and make it something physical, then yeah. the universe, and be very specific and measurable, the universe doesn't doesn't flow what we need to flow to us. I'm a big yeah. believer. Yeah. Yeah, I tell people yeah. that the universe is like water. You just, like, is, is something special. And yeah. It's so easy to like maneuver it if you just really put that like that energy, like you said. Yeah. Like, I, I just started watching the Bruce Lee 30 for 30. It's called <laughs> Be Water. And in it, he talks about how water takes shape to whatever it's in. If it's yeah. like, it takes the shape of a, of a cup. Um, you know, so it's it's interesting. Wait, somebody just asked, somebody just asked a question as we're sitting here talking about this. Uh, Monique asked, what insight can you give to someone wanting to launch more than one business? Oh, you can definitely launch more than one. Yeah. What's what insight? <laughs> what was my insight? Um, I'll answer. Well, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you go first. I was going to say, I, I, persistence. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer a little more. Yeah, I think, I think we'd probably answer somewhat the same. I would say, your, your time management and your time blocking has got to be really critical. 
yeah. you need to have a you need to have a very specific and measurable plan on each business. Um, what the specific um, message and target audience is, what pain it's answering, who your clients are, and then what are the the small things you need to do every single day, Monique, to really kind of keep the business moving. And it's about the small things you do every day to grow the business, not about doing things a lot once a week. And so it's the the consistency compounds, but you got to be really good at time blocking and really understand how you spend your time, study your time, study your calendar, become a master of your calendar. And then you can, it's, it's much easier to do it that way. Yeah. That calendar should be your best friend. <laughs> yeah. Your best friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, Monique, put them in the comments or anybody else. Um, all right. So, so, um, so PBA, so it's, you know, tell us how you kind of walked through the last couple of months. I mean, the, um, COVID and the pandemic, um, you know, how you've, how you've walked through that and how you're walking now as the world is kind of coming, coming back to work. Yeah. Well, I, I had to, when I first came into PBA, I had to understand the demographics of just these different pockets of uh, districts and neighborhoods and people in general. Yeah. And because you just assume everyone is like you because you wake up every day and everyone around you is like you yeah. until you step outside of those borders. And when COVID hit, though I had knew the different pockets of people and the different struggles that we go through on our own levels, I realized that COVID really emphasized that even more. Yeah. So what I did was me and my family, because, um, you know, my mom still hands over the daycares. She she and I were like, well, let's give back to the community. Yeah. So, I don't. Did you see that story? No. So what no. We, but if you said it to me, I'd love to watch it. Yeah. So what we did was we, we took $50,000 and we gave it to all of our parents and students who have been impacted by COVID. Oh, wow. And just that little extra help was just so major for them. Yeah. And so and not only did it, not only did it just give up, give them more faith in us because we, we provide transportation. We bought cars for people. We, we do housing cause I'm in real estate too. So a lot of our parents who don't have homes, they, we get them on section eight and then we put them in our homes. Um, we provide food and clothing. we I like to tell people we're more than just a daycare center. We are an essential part of the community. So now that we've transitioned from COVID and now we're kind of waking up, getting out of that, there's so much more trust with uh, New Beginnings and PBA from the community. And I feel like people really, people feel that we really understand them. And my mom told them, she's like, I've been there. Like she, she told us, she was like, I used to be on food stamps. I, you know, I've had my own struggles, but yeah. I made it out. And for them to hear that and knowing that I was a product of that when she was going through that when I was a little girl growing up in Detroit, they were like, oh, like you are real people. And it's like, yeah. So yeah, I think I it's just that. a lot of realizations yeah. on both ends. Yeah. You know, in, in, in any business, um, in any business, it would um, it's so important to connect emotionally with your people. Right? Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's the key. And being real and being vulnerable, you know, you and I being able to do a talk like this on Zoom um, in, 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 in our office looks like you're in a, in a kitchen and where this is the same set that everyone in the world has right now. Right. Yeah. And, um, and for us to do it, it's all especially doing it live. It's all about just you know, connecting emotionally with people who are listening now or later, um, being vulnerable to share your stories. And, um, and that's, those are a lot of the recipes for just being a successful business, being a, being just a kind human being. Um, and so when, when, when you look at your, the values of your business, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of companies have found that the, they, they didn't have solid enough values when COVID hit because working remotely, they didn't know how they didn't have that anchor. And so it sounds like you have that anchor. So how how does your company, you know, how did they come up with? And then how do you live the company values um, on a day to day basis? Uh, we, we definitely keep in touch. 
we, we have a great team and some of our employees have been with us 20 years. And a lot of the students have been with us from birth because we start at six weeks and we, we stop at 12 years old, but the kids, they'll go off to high school and they'll come back and do like, they'll help with the latchkey students or, so <clears throat> no one ever really leaves us. More right. people just kind of come into, but as far as our um, day-to-day philosophy, uh, I think when people just see us, it's like we just constantly represent that effortlessly. Yeah. That's genuinely who we are. Yeah. And being part of the community that you're talking about, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's um, to me, that's that's something that's so important. Um, you know, how how do companies, I think companies struggle with that. You know, a lot of companies will say it, but they struggle, I think, on how to really kind of, you know, reach out to the community. So what would you, what advice would you give people on how to reach out and, and really grassroots be part of the communities that they're serving? I think a lot of what I found was people like the idea of family because family is always so, I mean, we look at it from the Jacksons to uh, Mark, I mean, the Bernstein family with the law, you know, like yeah. everyone uses like this family dynamic to really blossom and people really get a kick out of that. But if you're not a family type business and some aren't, and that's totally respectable. Right. Um, I think just really being doing things for communities that genuinely need help. If you're profiting from a community that does not have, uh, that that has low income. Okay. You should be giving back to that community because they don't make a lot of money, but they take the time to give you that $20 bill to give you, to get, you know, whatever you're trying to sell to them. They buy it and that's why you're still there making money in that community. And I've witnessed, and my, my biggest issue was I would go to the inner city and I would see these businesses set up and the businesses were ran by people who don't look like people they're servicing. Mm-hmm. And, and so they're, they're doing their business, they're making money. But then once a child comes in and says, hey, I wanna, can you donate you as a business in my community? Can you donate to my basketball team or this trip I wanna go on for school? And you shoo them away. But their parents just gave you all this money to keep your, you know, yeah. it's little things that we pay attention to. So I think businesses that are in certain um, communities should really realize that and just be like, you know what, let's have a day where we just give out food or we just do this or how about all the kids come by and we give them like $10 towards their basketball team. I don't, you know, something. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of community coming together right now in the world um, Mm -hmm. is, which is great to see um, the, you know what we're what we're seeing. Just uh, my son was at a peaceful um, <clears throat> protest the other day. Um, you know, for Black Lives Matter. And so, can you can you talk a little bit about that? And 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 just I'll just leave the question at that. Just kind of, I'd love your you know your your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm. You know this this movement has turned into something mega that I just hold heartedly respect and that as I've watched on social media because people are like, what is a protest gonna do? You know, what does it prove? And I think a lot of times, I think we had all went through that that mindset, like, well, what has a protest really done thus far? Because right. we've made, like some changes were done, but nothing major for, for us, you know. But now it's like, these protests are really having impact. You know, right. statues are being taken down. Uh, people are losing their jobs. People are losing their businesses. Uh, people are being voted out of their political positions. You know, police departments are being defunded because of protesting. And <clears throat> what I what I see just with everything going on is we can't sep- we can't pocket people. We can't continuously categorize and stereotype people because I realize the impact that media has had on our social ideologies of one another. Yeah. Um, you know, we look at TV and we go, those people are like this. And we carry that in our spirit. And then we react to people in person based off what somebody on TV said. Yeah, It's just not healthy. And I think moving forward, especially like this Black Lives Movement, 
people who really didn't understand and they would never understand because they're not black, right. um, who didn't understand are like, oh, I see, I get it. This is why you have anger in your heart towards me or just towards the police or, and even people like me who didn't really, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up, a, I didn't understand a lot of things. I had to be exposed to certain neighborhoods and certain cultures. And even I was like, I'm no different from that other black woman because <clears throat> all black lives do matter. Yeah. So, it's, I think it's been a learning lesson for all of us and just an awakening for all of us. I, um, I recently watched uh, Trevor Noah on The Daily Show. Oh, I love him. He's great. Have you have you seen um, some of the uh, posts he put out on George Floyd um, recently? Um, it was great, um, and just he goes into and I just we don't need to dive in it right now, but I think it's worth um, for everybody to to watch. Um, and he's got some amazing um, just things on his website, and and I'm reading his book right now as well. Um, and it, it's just because I think we all have a responsibility to learn more right when we when we when we know better we do better yeah um and so you know so someone who maybe doesn't know you know what to you know what to what to do what can they do what can they do and i'm glad you asked that because i've had because my friend my group of friends are just just collective rainbow of people <laughs> <laughs> so and I don't even think we realize it until someone else says something. It's like, oh, you you are Chinese or whatever. So, <laughs> but I think a lot of it is just acknowledgement. And some of my friends who are white, they've asked me like, well, pageant, you know, what can I do? Because I want to be involved or help or whatever. Yeah. And it's and it's like, we I just we want you to just acknowledge when it's happening. So when someone who doesn't have who doesn't understand the movement or what's going on says something derogatory or, or, or just mean. Check yeah. check that person. Hey, that's not okay. Yeah. You know, and just acknowledging the situation and enlightening them because you enlightening them as one of them uh, comes across differently if I were to say it. Because mm -hmm. it sounds like, oh, you know, just this woman of color is mad about blah, 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 versus you as my white friend. Saying and it's like, oh, you okay? I can see where you're coming from because yeah. the culture you know, is is different. Yeah, that's good. I think that's that's great advice. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit more about your business. Um, so, thank you for all of that. So, um, so who's your ideal client? Like, who's you know? I know you do it. You do a bunch of different things. So, who's your ideal client in case somebody wants to connect with you? Oh, like a. Like a sponsor or just like no, no, no. just like somebody who could utilize your services as oh. your business. Yeah. Oh, uh kids. <laughs> uh most of my kids are between the age of five and fifteen. Yeah. So those who are just wanna like have fun and do sports. Because we have sports, we have a basketball team and cheer and we do dance and music and acting. So kids yeah. I understand that not all kids are STEM kids, you know, not all kids want to play sports and not all kids want to dance and do the arts. So yeah. we have an array of all of these things. All right, good. Yeah. Good. And where and where can they, and I know, um, and where can they get a hold of you? Tell everybody where they can get a hold of you if they, I know it's pbaroyal.com. Yeah, they can definitely go to the website. The phone number and things are there. Uh, the phone number is actually textable because I realize parents actually like to text and talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, good. And so what what would, so last couple questions. Um, what's one piece of wisdom that you would share with everybody today? Well, I'll, I'll say my motto. Yeah. <laughs> uh, never let anyone else smart you uh -huh. and, be, and be less emotional with your reactions. Uh, being emotional is too quick. But if you just take it, no matter how upset you are, what's going on, just slow down and stop and think before yeah. you react. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Agent, I appreciate you taking time to talk with me today. Um, you've got um, you some great things to share. 
uh, you got a solid, great business, and um, and and now that I know my dad is your dentist, you have you have great teeth. Yeah, so thank you, <laughs> your dentist. So I appreciate you being on the show. Um, thank you very much, and uh, keep on doing great work. So thanks so much. You too. Thank you. Thank you for having me.